Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, so first, before I launch into the topic, I just have to say that um, this is kind of sad. Um, yeah, Prince died a year ago. You know, I'm like a crazy, ridiculous Prince fan. Um, yeah, so by the time the next vlog comes out, the anniversary of his passing will have passed. And so I just wanted to say, you know, um, I'm reading the memoir that Maite Garcia wrote about her life with him, and I'm so glad she wrote it. It's like the, it's the story I always wanted to know. Like, what would it be like if Prince courted me? You know, she tells the story of, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful story. And uh, he was such a gentleman. Anyway, so yeah, special hi to all the crazy Prince fans out there. I love you and it's a big anniversary for us. And for those of you who aren't, you're like, Susan, get on with it. Okay, so I will. Um, so I've got a great topic to read today, it's something I'm looking forward to discussing. I've uh, This was sent in a long time ago and I've been keeping it in the hopper of like, oh, this is one I really want to address. Okay, check it out. Hi, Susan. I'm wondering about the claim that exercise is not good for weight loss. I understand your explanation about this, but when I repeat it to others, when they ask if I'm exercising, they always respond by saying, what? That's not true. Maybe you could talk more about what you mean and some of the research about this, because I think many people experience weight loss when they exercise, my past self included. And so the statement that exercise is bad for weight loss seems like it could use more explanation. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm enjoying the permission not to exercise while losing weight. I'm just not sure how to explain this to people. Can you clarify? Love, Katie. All right, so yeah, Katie, uh, such a good topic. Okay, so first the big picture, right? Big picture. The big picture is 108 million people in America are spending money trying to lose weight. Our weight loss, you know, attempts are not working. People are not losing weight. They're trying four and five new attempts each year, spending $63 billion a year to do it. And our obesity rates are skyrocketing. And people are trying to hit the gym to lose weight, right? So, I mean, in general, you can just sort of look at people. I mean, don't, don't do this, but like in your head, you can just say, yeah, how's that working for you? You know, like I know in the past, you said like my past attempts, but obviously they were past attempts because you gained the weight back, right? So um, in general, the current thinking about weight loss is not working for anybody in general, right? The numbers are just really clear on that. But let's, let's look at some specific numbers. When it comes to actual studies that have looked at this, exercise does not help weight loss. So example, um, 2009, published in Plus One, they took um, 464 overweight women who didn't exercise and they assigned them randomly to one of four conditions. One was the control condition. They were told not to exercise, not to change their eating. They were asked to fill out some surveys regularly. Um, the other three conditions all were assigned to work out with a personal trainer. The study gave them a personal trainer to work out with. Um, and it was like, it was for weird amounts of time. One was like 70 something minutes a week. Um, one was 136 minutes a week and the other was 196 minutes a week or something like that. So basically like, a, you know, two sessions, four sessions or six sessions a week with a personal trainer, hard hitting exercise. At the end of six months, on average, people and women in all four conditions weighed the same. They'd all lost a tiny bit of weight. The women in the exercise conditions had not lost any more weight than the women in the no exercise condition. The women in the no exercise condition lost a tiny bit of weight just by filling out the, um, the health surveys once a month. Seriously, that will help you lose a little bit of weight. You're just focusing on your overall well-being a little bit more. Um, and they not only did they not lose any more weight, they didn't lose any more fat either. They measured body fat. They didn't lose any more fat. So um, why? Well, there's a compensation issue that happens. So when you work out um, over time, your brain starts demanding more food, essentially. And you also, this is other, there's other research that shows you also 
burn less fuel at other times of day by being more sedentary throughout the day. You don't run upstairs, you just, your body kicks into a mode where it's conserving energy at other times of the day. So now a lot of people will say, well, um, muscle burns more than fat. So obviously if you, you know, like lose fat and gain muscle, which you can do at the gym, right? Um, you set up your metabolic engine for being on your side, right? Okay, well, um, research published in 2001 by Columbia University um, showed that actually how much energy, how many calories a pound of fat burns each day is two calories a day, and a pound of muscle burns uh, six calories a day for a difference of four calories a day. That's the difference. So if you took, if you lost 10 pounds of fat and replaced it with 10 pounds of muscle. Now, I don't know if you've been to the gym lifting weights, building 10 pounds of muscle is not a trivial thing at all. A female might have actually a really hard time doing that at all. Men, because they have more testosterone, can, t can put on 10 pounds of muscle, but that is not a trivial thing to do. We're talking about really hard hitting weight, uh, weight bearing exercise, right? To, to put on 10 pounds of muscle. So you take off 10 pounds of fat, replace it with 10 pounds of muscle. Now, uh, each of those pounds is giving you an extra four calories a day of burn. That's 40 calories a day. That's how much extra you get to eat a day or how much you're going to burn. 40 calories a day. That's like half a cup of skim milk, a third of a banana. That's not getting you anywhere. The reality is that the, the energy expenditure that, that exercise affords you is like nothing compared to what people actually eat. Like you can sit down without even realizing it and eat, you know, five times more food than, you know, you could burn all morning at the gym. Like it's, it's just shocking. Like exercise deals with this amount of energy, food puts in this amount of energy. The only way to lose weight is to dramatically change your eating habits, dramatically change your eating habits. And it might be the case that in the past you lost some weight by going to the gym, but you also probably were trying to change the way you were eating. That weight loss was because of the food change, not because of the gym you were hitting. So here's the thing. All those people who say, that's not true, <laughs> that's not true. I almost promise you that they have not been obese, they're not now slender, and they haven't helped hundreds of, or thousands of other people to lose their excess weight and keep it off. When you're in the, the role of doing that, what you learn is simply this. <sighs> there is a phenomenon in place where losing your excess weight and keeping it off is an embodied experience in an environmental paradigm, meaning, you got to do it in the real world. You got to do it in the real world. You're in a body that has a brain and you got to go through your life in such a way that you're going to be able to stick to a certain food regimen in your real life, instantiated in this culture, this society, with those vending machines and those movie theater snack bars and this potluck and that you know, holiday, you've got to actually do this in the real world. And what I'm here to tell you is, as someone who's done it herself and has helped lots of other people to do it, that in the real world, a whole other set of circumstances come into play. We are not machines that it's like, oh, calories in and calories out and, you know, you know, eat less and burn more. The no, it's like, really, after you've gone to the gym, and now you've got a brain that's telling you, I deserve a little treat, blah, blah, blah. And then you throw in the stress and then you throw in the traffic jam. What are the odds that you're deciding to order pizza tonight for dinner? Like in the real world, going to the gym puts a stress on the system that makes things unravel. And you know what I love about this is that our tribe, our Bright Line Eating tribe is starting to understand this in their bones. Like now that I've pointed it out to them, the people who've been through a boot camp with me and, and are in Bright Lifers now, like we get it. We can start to hear it on a coaching call. People will send me text messages or like, they'll be like, oh, this person that you're, that you're coaching right now on this coaching call, um, she needs to stop going to the gym. Like they can hear it that like the, the working out that they're doing is 
is causing the, their bodies to wake up and demand food and it's starting to send them into a spiral of not being able to control the food that they put in their mouth. And it's causing them to make exceptions to their plan and it's causing the whole system to unravel right in front of their eyes. The working out is causing the system to unravel. So, you know, with the article that I shared with you, the 2009 article with the 464 overweight or obese women, right? That article showed that exercise doesn't help weight loss, right? I'm here to tell you that exercise hurts weight loss. It hurts it. It will cause the system to fail. And the reason is that what you got to do to take your weight off for real, for real, in a real body with a real brain in this world is you got to get conditions such that you can start with a plan of eating and stick with it without deviating so that it becomes automatic so that you're not relying on your willpower to do it. You need to get that plan of eating as automatic as brushing your teeth. And getting that system set up requires that your body not fight you too much and that your brain not trick you into making exceptions. And exercise puts stress on the system at exactly the wrong place. It causes the body to wake up and fight you more to get more food. When you exercise, your body gets hungrier. It gets more demanding of food. And it just comes right in and it starts to like, this physiological hunger starts to happen. If you're trying to lose weight and you're getting to the gym, your body starts to want more fuel. And then you come from the top, you come from the brain, the like, the like compensate, it's called the compensation effect. Look it up in the scientific literature. The compensation effect comes in where suddenly your brain is justifying an exception. You've been to the gym, you've been to the gym all week, it's been such a long, hard week, and all of a sudden your brain is justifying an, an exception. And those exceptions, little tiny ones, in and of themselves, they don't cause any harm at all. The harm that they cause is to the system. It, it keeps habits from forming. It keeps automaticity from kicking in. And all of a sudden, people's food is like willy wonky all over the place. They don't know what happened. And it's like, yeah, those exceptions you were making back then, you were still losing weight. You thought you were getting away with it. You were stepping on the scale going, yay, I'm fine. No, now it's months later. You do not have automatic habits in place you're, and your willpower is waning like that fabulous motivation that existed when you started the plan six months ago. It's nowhere to be found. Now you're bored with it. Now it's, you know, it's been a long time now. All that fabulous motivation that you should have used at the very beginning to just nail it, to dial in the habits, that's all gone. <laughs> and now you're left with the fallout of the exceptions that you made way back when. Why? Because you were hitting the gym. And because now your body needed more food, it was demanding more food, and your brain was weaseling its way into some exceptions here and there, and that's exactly the wrong formula for success. You need to get the system calm enough, relaxed enough, rested enough, that you can kind of just ease your body into tolerating the weight loss while you're busy nailing in the habits, forming the river grooves of just automaticity and your weight comes off, comes off, comes off, comes off, comes off. And then you've got this system of, of automatic eating that starts to serve you morning, noon, and night. Every day it starts to serve you and you've got the system dialed in. Exercise keeps that from happening. And it's, it's something that you only really, really get if you've done it. Like if you really have, you know, if you've gone from obese to slender and live there, I'll just tell you just one last quick little story to nail home the point, which is that, um, you know, I recently went to New York City for my book launch. It was a crazy time. It was a wonderful time, but it was a crazy time. I flew to LA to film the doctors right before that. And then I got to New York City and I ate out in restaurants almost continuously. I ate breakfast in the Airbnb mostly, but then it was lunch and dinner out every day. And then we met people for breakfast several times too. So I would say half the days we were there, it was breakfast, lunch, and dinner out. 
So I'm, I ate, you know, whatever, 22 restaurant meals in, you know, um, in like nine days, right? So I come back to Rochester, New York, 22 restaurant meals later, I'm up like eight pounds. I, my size four still fit, but I was not comfortable in my body with all that extra weight on me. Yuck. So now I'm looking to get rid of my weight. So what do I do? I decide not to go to spinning class. Not to go. I want to go to spinning class Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I love spinning class. But what do I do to take off my weight? I say, no, thank you. I'm not going to spinning class. Why? Because what I need to do right now is I need to get into that, that perfect seamless groove of getting my food dialed in. And the last thing I need right now is my body fighting me and my brain trying to trick me into some kind of exception. What, what my brain will do, because it knows I won't make an exception at home. My scale tells me what to eat. My little book by the fridge tells me what to eat. I eat that. It'll trick me into eating out. That's what, that's what my brain will do. It'll, and I have three kids who always want to eat out. I have a husband who likes to eat out. I've got friends who want to meet for lunch or whatever. My brain will trick me into eating out. And that is its way to get more food. Because if I'm in a restaurant, I'm not, you know. So I got some weight to take off after getting back from that crazy trip. Mm, I'm not going to spinning class. I will abstain from spinning class until my weight's where I want it to be. And then I will hit the gym for my mood and my muscle tone and my cardiovascular fitness and my memory and my attention and my focus and my sex drive and my self-confidence and all those awesome things that hitting the gym is awesome for. If I have weight to lose, mm -mm, I'm not going to the gym. No, that'll throw off the whole system. So to anyone who's like, what? That's not true. You know, I wouldn't school them like I'm sort of schooling here and just be like, yeah, well, you know, really, who's losing weight in this world? And what are they trying to do? Mm. You know, but that's the science of it. The science is research shows that exercise won't make you thin. And to get thin, you have to build automatic habits, which means you have to have a body that's not fighting you for more food and a brain that's not trying to trick you into exceptions. And when you exercise, that's exactly what happens. Your body fights you for more food. Your brain tricks you into exceptions. There's literature on all that. So I hope that helps, Katie. Um, it was a great question, very well phrased. I'm glad you're enjoying your time in your bunny slippers. It will end and I will coax you back into the gym when your, uh, when your habits are all automatic. And, um, to all the Prince fans in the world, April 21st, I'll be thinking of you and, um, all the days between now and then. And I love you all. And, uh, one last thing. Would you, if you've read the Bright Line Eating book, go on to Amazon and write a review for it? I would be so grateful. We're getting close to 600 reviews, I believe. We're aiming for a thousand or more. And uh, yeah, just love watching those reviews tick up. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And um, I'll see you next week.